You know, for the longest period of time, I didn't even know this card was actually had a first part to its name. Vanguard. Vanguard Bannerman. Let's put Radiant at the top already. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Pog, PP. What's up, man? Vanguard Bannerman. I think most of the Allegiance cards are going to have similar... Oh, no, no, no. Some of the Allegiance cards are really bad. But Bannerman's a really good Allegiance card. It just... It's... Okay. It just slaps. It's, ob it's obviously not going to be an S-tier card. It's extremely... It's extremely optional. It's definitely a really good card, though. For that, I'm going to put Bannerman into the A-tier for now. Like, when you're building a mid-range Demacia deck, you're always considering Bannerman, unless you're dipping out of it to go deeper into other regions for mid-range strategy. Solid option. Buffing the board. Good tempo. A. It's above... It's considered more than less. Like, you consider Bannerman more than you don't. So for that, I put it above B. Zephyr is an F. <laughs> it got nerfed too. You can't copy itself. Half the Allegiance cards are terrible? Yes. Also, are you... Tiring things with tomorrow's patch in mind? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll consider that. But I don't think there's any rare cards that got touched here. Lawrence Bladekeeper. People actually played this card in some decks recently. However, I think it's... Yordle Grifter is a rare. Yordle Grifter is not in this collection. So this is the foundation collection. So this is just the base set, rares. Also, Lawrence Bladekeeper is a solid C. I don't think it's a bad card. Although, I don't think it's an optimal card. So for that... It goes underneath the B tier and ends up in C. Vanguard Sergeant. That's alright, observation. Vanguard Sergeant generates value. It's an interesting card. One that's not oftentimes considered. Generating a 4 Demacia is pretty powerful though. Nobody played it recently. Uh, what do you guys think? I see a B. I see a C. Standalone is an F. Yeah, we, there's going to be a lot of Fs in this. Close to B. I'll put Vanguard Sergeant into the B for now, guys. Like, when you think about the card itself, a 3 mana 3 3 is a great stat line. Obviously, it's not fitting into many decks at the moment. But if there's ever a time for justice, for Demacia, it's actually pretty good. You never run for Demacia, but you run this. Elite tag's relevant. It's consistent. All right. B tier it is, guys. Swiftling Lancer. I'm also going to put Swiftling Lancer into the B tier. I think it's a pretty good option. Generates huge value. 5 mana, 5 4 with Challenger. The health isn't as relevant, although it has 5 attack. It's great. Challenger, it's great. Last breath, great. Gen cr generates value. Incredible card. Reinforcements. Man, I would have put this into a D tier, if not recently, for the Rise of Elites. In general, the card is an 8 mana summon 2 four fours and buff your board, buff your elites. This probably probably fits somewhere in the C tier as well. Holy shit, guys. Radiant Guardian. Where do you think Radiant Guardian should go? Be honest. Be honest, guys. F tier. <laughs> <laughs> 110% Radiant Guardian is an S tier champion. It's not hard to meet her requirements, and damn, life still and tough. Still carrying half of Demacia on her back, right? Holy shit. What an insane card. 
it's like you would like you argue you argue that like you need to kill a unit to like get the effect but that's not hard it's not hard so it's always a five minute five five of life steal and tough <sighs> pog out that card's incredible she carries the marcia she carries all of her decks she's incredible card stand alone four mana give a unit plus three plus three if you have one unit on the field this card from three mana to four mana become one of the worst cards in the game the best case scenario won't be here for longer dug out in a bit no worries man i still remember lux karma too <laughs> i haven't got an f i've got d f maybe i'll start to add f's into these <laughs> tier lists in the future actually because d d is for the memes in the in the bad cards but maybe we need an f and f is just for solid garbage in fact i can do one right now add a row below new row what color should this be fucking gray <laughs> We have a new tier, guys. How pog is that? Standalone. Big F. <laughs> I bet you guys didn't see that coming. What a twist of events. This is going to change the meta so much now for the tier list. Mobilize. Mobilize is actually pretty good. <laughs> Standalone unlocked a new tier. Uh, mobilize is actually uh, reasonable. I'm going to put it in C. So what the fuck's D tier now? Bad cards. Meme cards. I, th I think reinforcements goes into D. Unoptimal. So is that actually. We have to start broadening our, our horizons now. The meta's changed for our tier list. So reinforcements and Laurent Blade Keeper definitely feel like D cards. I'm gonna slot mobilize into the C tier for now. On guard and give all allies challenger this round. We haven't really seen this be relevant for quite some time. You think Mobilize is better than Swiftwing Lancer? As of recently... What if I did this? Would that make more sense? Because B, B, B is going to look different now. The tier list meta is changing, guys. I think Mobilize is on the same level as Swiftwing Lancer for value. Only as of recently did Mobilize start doing anything amazing. And prior to that, it wasn't. On guard. Cavalry might be a B. Well, I don't think on guard's a bad card either. Look, I, I want to put Swiftling up here, okay? I'm going to keep Mobilize in C. Vanguard Sergeant alongside it. On Guard is going to go into D. Because it's not exactly a terrible card. It gives all your units challenger 3 mana at burst speed. That could be... At some point, that might be a good card. Remembrance. Remembrance fixes your curve. It summons... A bit of a, it's a various units that oftentimes are good. Um, I wouldn't call Remembrance S tier though. But it's a damn strong card. I think Remembrance is a really good A tier card. I think Radiant Guardian is definitely an S tier card over Remembrance. I think the problem is that in guard, on guard is in a region that already has a shit ton of playable challenges. That's kind of very much true. Like, can you imagine if they put on guard into like T1 
Targon. That's kind of pog. I think. Battlesmith. Battlesmith. Gee. All of the elite cards, guys. We have to step away from the elite decks for a little bit. Now, Battlesmith. I still see this Battlesmith being on the same level in the D tier. And I'm going to put a lot of these cards into that slot because of it. Now, Battlesmith is a 2 mana 2 2 that provides tempo if you play elites on turn 3. It's pretty good. You don't get to attack with it though. You don't attack with it on turn 2 unless they have an empty board. You think it's a C? C? I see another C there. Nope, D. Yep, cock. Well, I see two C's and we see two D's. We're going to need one more vote to justify our decision. D gang. All right, D. That's the third one, guys. It has to be a D. It has to be a D. It can't be snowballing. Elite's overrated. Ah, uh, I would say the elite deck is a good deck, faint. Especially, or maybe not at the master's rank. So in general, okay, elites overrated, but to an extent, because I believe you can climb with it. For Demacia, I think playing for Demacia in your main deck is probably a bad idea when you come when you compare it to Vanguard Sergeant. But is 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 for Demacia and another F tier card? I don't think it's that terrible. I don't think it's that terrible. I compare it to On Guard, right? Where who knows in the future? Yeah, oh, <laughs> couple Fs there, guys. I'm going to put it at the lowest end of D for now. Pretty much on the borderline of F. Okay. We'll come back to Battlesmith later. Maverick, how are you, buddy? You coming to join the fun? What's up, cutie? Not much, just rating some cards. Guys, repost. Repost is definitely a solid card and it's going, it's going to be above C for sure. I just don't know if I want to put repost into B or A. I think B seems like a good spot for it. You know what? Yeah, we'll put it into B. I very much compare this to Swiftling Lancer in terms of like playability and usefulness. Like in decks that you would consider Swiftling Lancer, you might consider cards like Repost as well. I don't think A tier is good enough for it. Yeah, B B feels comfortable. Yeah, everyone, everyone throw their pogs out there. Everyone throw their pogs out there. All right, guys, Senna. Senna is a three mana 4-2 with quick attack that you always play with Lucian and only play with Lucian. So in, for that, I put Senna into the C tier. Mage Seeker Persuader. Oh, has anybody ever really felt that good about playing this card? Is this C-worthy? Is Mage Seeker Persuader a C card? I don't know if I can put it into C. You guys think C? Oh, I'm gonna do C. I don't think that's unreasonable. Cause like, you play a six mana card, it's pretty good. Back to back. Sudden feels great about it. Sudden smokes weed. Back to back. Is pretty solid. Definitely a B tier card. Not game breaking enough to be considered as much as an A tier card for uh, playability and uh, usefulness. Definitely a solid B. B plus. Let's put it. Let's put it. Now nah, we'll leave it right there. Solid. 
in the end, whatever cards are towards the first half of B are B pluses and towards the lower half of B minuses. So B plus back to back will most likely be. The next one's D. The next one, redoubled Valor, fully heal an ally, then double its power and health. I compare this mostly to standalone. Is this not a really bad card? Because like in Legends of Runeterra, it's very easy to react to your opponent's minions. It is not hard for your opponent to deal with whatever you're trying to redouble Vela. I think I think it's almost unusable too. Big fat F, I'm, I'm sorry. The card is oh, complete garbage and yeah, the, the, the maybe in the future things might change, but that's, I think it just, it has just as much of a chance as being playable as much as standalone. Mage Seeker Inciter. Grant me plus two plus two once you've cast a six plus cost spell this game. Uh, this card's a D. Double Valor on Asol? <laughs> You're memeing. I think Mage Seeker might also fit into the C slot next to the other Mage Seeker. It's not a terrible card. You might consider it in Mage Seeker decks or decks that run spells. In the past, it's found some usefulness. I think it has more play, like it has more chance of being played than the cards below it in general. I'll put it in a C minus for now. Battle Fury. Where the fuck does Battle Fury go? C, I see a couple C's. I agree. It's probably on the same level as these cards, right? It does serve some niche decks. Yeah, it's, it's it sees occasional use, right? Some some decks have considered this in the past. You have done some pretty cool stuff with elusives, overwhelm. Yeah, C feels like a comfortable home for Battle Fury. So take heart. I think take heart is almost a, a similar C. It has found some usefulness in the past. Blood Sworn Sweat, uh, Blood, Blood Sworn Pledge. Pretty similar to, right? I think I can just go ahead and put these into the C tier pretty comfortably. Burst Speed Board Buffs are pretty good. They'll never be terrible cards, and they're a lot more playable than these D tier cards. Rhyme Fang Wolf. We haven't really seen, give me one sec guys. We haven't really seen this card be played for a while. Blood Swan, I think goes into the D. It sees significantly, significantly less use than the other two. It also is a Grant effect. Grant has to have a little bit of value. Obviously it sees significantly less play than the other two. Right, I understand, but also we see we see significantly not much play of these cards either. You think Wolf might be a B? Oh, I'm gonna put Blood Swan Sledge Pledge at the top of our D. Wolf is Pog. In its region, Frostbite's pretty relevant. In some metas, it might find a quite a bit of usefulness. I still believe Rhyme Fang has to be a C. But then again, like we look at the cards in B and perhaps, yeah. You know what? Yeah, that looks correct. That looks correct. 
not many like we're not like obviously we'll see what the rest of the cards look like and we might come back to rhyme fang wolf later but if i start to see a trend of cards in b that are being currently played and have been played throughout most metas then i'm gonna have to move rhyme fang down to c i'm gonna leave it in b for now avalanche I think Rhyme Fang might find a new home too. Avalanche though. Let's have a look. I think B, no A, high B, low A. I don't think Avalanche has been played that much. When it fits the meta, it's nice. Yes. I'm going to put Avalanche at the top of B tier. B cards are pretty solid, guys. You'll consider them. Poro Herder. Fat D. <laughs> I don't think it's a terrible card. It's two mana, two, three. On treat. <laughs> Anything related to Porus is an automatic F. I think on treat is a C. Draw a champion. This card might find value throughout the entire game of Runeterra. At some point or another, you will ask yourself if you're in free old, should I run a treat? How important is my champion card? And that card exists and it's always going to be useful at some point. There will be a time where it's extremely useful. Ancient Yeti. God, if, if Sudden was here, if Sudden was in the chat, he could talk to us about Ancient Yeti and why it's so good. But Sudden's not here. I think Ancient Yeti is a complete D card. I don't think it's extremely bad. It is a bit of a value engine. Reducing the cost of it can always be quite powerful. But do I, do I think, I, I think it's a terrible card, man. I don't think it's that bad, but it's very unoptimal. Starlight Seer. Bro, actually, I think I'm putting Starlight Seer into the S, guys. Two mana, two, three, whenever you cast a spell, grant a top ally in your deck, plus one, plus one. What an, what an insane card. What an insane card. Obviously, you need to build your deck around spells, but... Like, it just, it just feels nuts whenever you play it. S. Remember when Starlight Seer would die to Mystic Shot? I do. No longer exists. Ever since they buffed its HP, it actually got really insane. It does insane things. You can build decks around Starlight Seer. Like, that's how crazy it is. Holy shit, guys. They who endure. What a stupid card. What a stupid card, guys. 
you nerf it, it's still cra crazy. It's a rare card. It's a rare card that you build your deck around. Holy shit, it's a win condition. Holy shit. Top of S? Fine. There you go. Best cut, best rare in the game at the moment. Have a Rosen Outriders. I don't think Outriders is a terrible card. Do you think it do you think we put this into the F? I can think of a lot worse cards. I don't think Outriders is that bad. Obviously we don't play it. Plus three plus three to the next unit in your deck. That's tempo. It's not an F. I just don't know whether it's a C or a D. I don't think you could ever, um, like, like obviously not going to consider it, but I don't think you can ever automatically delete it. I'm just thinking like just overall, you know, like just the, the, the power level of the card, it's ceiling potential, past history you know just sometimes just the card itself is a four mana three three with overwhelm that sounds bad but the effect is good it's d until mid 2021 <laughs> all right d it is guys i don't think the card's that bad flash freeze yeah flash freeze is going to be Quite possibly a B card, actually. Wow, the ability to add frost speed, frostbite, anything in the game. That's always going to be an option. Some metas obviously don't need flash freeze, but... That's a strong card. It's half of harsh wins. Yeah, it's a B. Frostbite cards are generally pretty solid. However, R Rhyme Tusk Shaman is probably going to be a D as well. I put it right next to Averrosian Outriders because who knows if these cards can find some usefulness within some point in time. However, they're not played and they're quite underpowered. So big D. Yeah, Shatter's garbage. Harsh wins is an S. Ooh. Ooh, that's a big statement. I think Harsh wins is a solid A. It's double of Flash Freeze. Is there cards that I forgot? Shatter isn't from the... No, Shatter is an expansion card, isn't it? Guys, Shatter is from the Rising Tides expansion, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so if it's not here, it's not here. I may have missed some card. Shatter is from Foundations. Are you guys telling me that I missed a card? Shatter is a common, guys. We did that yesterday. You guys want to go check out the uh, check out the video? Boom, boom. YouTube. We got the little. We got the thumbnail right there. Look at my cute face. Check it out, dude. It's fucking two hours long. Heart of the fluff it. Holy shit, man. Holy shit. Can I put Heart of the Fluffer in F? 
and we've seen people try and play this card to barely any success. Fake's profile picture got buffed. Moonstalker stonks. I called it. That's why I've been using it as my um, picture because I know it's going to take over the meta. Put it in G. There is no G tier here. Fluff it is D tier. Haven't you seen the painfulness people go through to play it? It is so bad. Scar Maiden Reaver. 5 mana 4 5 with Overwhelm and Regeneration. Solid D. Solid D. I see Yeti. What does this card even do? When I'm summoned, frost, frostbite enemies with three or less health. Seven mana, five, five. Holy shit, that's a terrible card. Did you know for one more mana? Like, oh, dude, that has to be a, this has to be a terrible card, right? Holy shit. All you get's the body. We have Ice Quake now. It's never been played in the past. I can't think of a situation where it'd be useful ever. Rex comparison. I see Eddie is good with exactly Ash on board. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so it's a two mana frostbite all enemies with three or less health. If we take away the stats of the unit. I don't think that's a very good card. Pack mentality. Give all allies plus two plus two and overwhelm this round. Pack mentality, hey? G. Maybe in your Snapvine deck, could you play this? I wouldn't say it's that trash of a card to put it into F. D. I see a couple Ds as well, yeah. Like, there could be some point in time where this card could be useful. It has a higher chance of being useful than the rest of the cards down here. Yeah, D it is. Put it somewhere in the middle. Ritual of Renewal is also going to be a D. Actually, well, seven mana, heal an ally or nexus from seven, draw one. Yeah, that's a D. Have you guys seen Star Shaping? That's a powerful card. Are we sure which rule isn't an F? I don't think it's complete garbage. <laughs> Avalanche should be in the same tier as Harsh Winds. I'm telling you to reconsider. I will look at it. Might be an F? Fuck. I don't think it's the worst card. I don't, I don't know if it's complete garbage, guys. Obviously, you're not going to play it. I've seen it played in the past. All right, guys. All right. You know, I wasn't too confident. I can see a lot of people think this card's garbage. It is kind of garbage. If they change the speed of it, it would probably be an F. But yeah, at slow speed, this card does feel kind of bad. And we compare it to star shaping especially. That is a huge power creep on this card. Yeah, it's just like it wants to it wants to be a really good control tool, but it needs a serious buff. Like this card, yeah, just seems too expensive for what you get from it. The healing seven is not useful.
All right. All right. It's a terrible card, guys. It is a terrible card. Avalanche. You're getting a buff. Uh, let's move on. Deathmark. It's super situational. Only use it when you're dead. That's not very useful. That's not a good situation. Deathmark. Solid D. Fade Blade Twirler. It's either a C or a B, guys. Two mana, one, three with quick attacks. Not bad. You stun a unit or recall a unit. Get plus two. It's pretty powerful in the stun decks or recall decks. I like putting Fae Blade Twirler right next to Rhyme Fang Wolf. Actually. I think it's a pretty good card. Not gonna lie. I see a couple of C's, I see a couple of B's. I think it has a high ceiling. It's infinite stacking. In some metas, obviously most metas, it's not good. But in terms of like the whole stun and recall archetype, oftentimes this card can be better than the other cards to synergize around it. I do, I do compare it a lot to Legion General in terms of what they do. But this is more early game. Hmm. I'm going to put it at the lowest end of B for now. Starlight, by the way, never been relevant in any meta decks. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. But do you not think this card is insane for what it does? I think it's a top tier. I think it's very top tier. We'll come back to it. Stand United, guys. Stand United. Swap two allies, give them barrier this round. Yes, yeah, see. C. C for Stand United. It's like not really played, but its effect is somewhat good. Barriers are burst speed are good. We saw the uh, common three mana barrier card being a solid C. So I can see Stand United being a C. The swapping of allies can sometimes be an issue, but it could also be a buff. It's a barrier. Somewhat okay. Still Tempest, after the buff. Probably going to be another solid C. Definitely a high tier C card though. Because Faint makes me nervous. Starlight C is getting nerfed to A. Also, guys, Zephyr Sage. It got nerfed. It's always been a terrible card. This has to be a bad card, right? 
Uh, but it's, uh, no, no, it's not, it's not F. Is it? Is it just an F? Yeah, it's probably just an F. Throughout time, there's never been a really good, like, use other than outside of meme decks, which are terrible. You play Zephyr Sage to copy a unit in your hand. Like, yeah. It's complete, it's complete poo. Dual Protector. Is a better version of Zephyr. It's kind of a useful card. I like Jewel Protector in this C. Throughout my personal experience, I found Jewel Protector to be a Seek type of card. Former B, currently D. I'm gonna put it at C, okay, you guys? Look at the rest of the cards in C. Has to be somewhere in there. Dawn and Dusk, summon two exact copies of an ally, they're ephemeral. Dawn and Dusk, is definitely a solid D, low D, very, very low D, somewhere around here. It has some usefulness. It's not a completely garbage card, but it's mostly memeing. Sown Seas, holy shit. That is actually a terrible card. Can I suggest something to save time? I suppose so, but I've got to milk it. I've never heard of Sown Seeds, either I have a lot of players. Give me a minute, I'll be back, no worries man. Sown Seeds is a terrible card. You have to have lots of units in your hand. You have to, you can play as a burst speed. That's like irrelevant. What does it do? Two mana burst speeds fella grants all allies in hand plus one plus zero. Yeah, that's straight up trash. Uh, it never goes into D tier. Cloud drinker. Definitely a D. I mean, a six mana three five, your burst spells cost one less. There's somewhat of a ceiling there. I compare it a lot to Dawn and Dusk. Solitary Monk. I'm going to put you into the sea at the moment. Or maybe even a B. I think Solitary Monk actually deserves a B slot. It has elusive tag, it's a 3 mana 3 through with elusive. That's quite powerful. Karma's inside of Aegis. That's probably going to be a D. I mean, you only really play it from playing Karma. In history, we've never main decked this card. Remember when Shadow Assassin was OP? I remember when it was auto-include. It wasn't necessarily OP, but it was auto-include. Karma's inside of Aegis is probably gonna be a D card. You're in Lighten, you create two random spells from your region. Solid D, almost an F, D minus, River Shaper, River Shaper is a solid C. Three mana two two strike draw a spell, almost a D, probably a C. It's kind of useful. <laughs> I 
Okay, I see I see your point now on how to save time. Go and put all the auto includes into F. <laughs> uh Yuzari. I put that somewhere up in the C tier as well. Oh man, almost a D. It found usefulness in uh Sudden's elusive deck once upon a time. Holy shit, River Shaper A? Bruh. B maximum. C most of the time. I don't think it's that good of an option. Holy shit, we got some River Shaper cosplayers in the chat. Too many cosplayers here, guys. I don't think it's that great. Yeah, you play it, you play it in Demacia and Ionia. That's cool. C is like, you would also consider building your deck without it. <laughs> All right. Okay. River shape of B tier. Holy shit. Out of nowhere. Gee, you guys are going to murder me. Okay. It is pretty good. Look at the rest of the cards in B tier. All right. It makes sense. Deny. We haven't got any spells in the S tier yet. Denier will stop a fast or a slow speed spell or skill. Yeah, this is top tier. This is top tier rare card. This is top tier card. This is like always something that's going to be a relevant card for the entirety of Runeterra. So that has to put it into an S tier card as well, just for that. This card, yeah, this card is just always relevant. You see your opponent playing Ionia? This card is insane. Obviously, it doesn't look, always look that powerful, but in general, the card is insane. I think Deny is an S tier. Very powerful card. Yeah. Deny deserves a home at the S tier. Top echelon, insane cards. Deny is an extremely powerful card. I don't think I could put it anywhere below. Yeah. King Cow Wayfinder. I think King Cow's okay. I wouldn't say it's anything too special. I'm going to put King Cat Wayfinder and see. It might find some usefulness here and there, but majority of the time, uh, not so much. King B. True. All of these cards in S have been nerfed, except for Radiant, which I'm sure might get nerfed one day. King Cat is a pretty solid, solid allegiance card. You build your deck around it. It's okay. Yone. It's probably going to be a C tier card as well. It definitely has a lot more uses than the rest of the cards in the D tier. Um, if it's somewhere into the C. It's an option sometimes. Oh, the next card's exciting, guys. Hang on. I don't know why it's so hot. It's for one time hot in Australia. 
Decimate. You're putting, you're just putting it at C because you never hit allegiance. No, that's not true. That's not true, Tenkua. That can't, that's not exactly true. Decimate's definitely above C. Decimate's a great card. I can, I compare Decimate to like, when you're making an aggro deck, holy shit. Earlmeister. Decimate is a B? I think Decimate's a pretty strong card. It's a B, right? With the repost? Hmm. I don't know, man. I think Decimate's pretty insane for aggro decks. Uh, thanks for the redemption, dude. <laughs> it is, but limited decks can run it. Yeah, I wouldn't think too much about like the limited decks as much as just the power level of the card. Good evening, by the way. Hello. You got the little verified tick next to your name. It's it's making me nervous, man. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'll ever see one of those things. That's pretty pog, man. Decimate has to be better than Swiftling Lancer. Yeah, I agree. I don't think Decimate's a B tier card. I think it's a great card. And for that, a great card it goes into an A tier. What's the verified thing for? For being extra pog. Arena Bookie. Very good role playing card. D tier. It definitely has found some more uses as of recently, but in general, the card is kind of underwhelming. You can do some niche stuff with it, I guess. Calling Strike. Kill a unit with three or less power. Whew, that's a good card. Starlight doesn't seem to fit with the in with the boys right there. Should be meta changing though. Uh, not necessarily. I feel like uh, cards within the a S to A tier might be meta changing. And I do I do believe like Decimate can be meta changing. These cards do can affect the meta a, a little bit. These cards don't really affect the meta. Yeah. Okay, we'll do, I'll, I'll run back through my theory for each of these ranks. So S is like, S is like meta changing. All right, that makes sense, especially looking at this. S can be meta changing, very powerful cards, or sometimes build around cards, or almost auto include. A is powerful cards that you don't always consider for a deck, but a huge, like very viable options for a lot of archetypes. B is usually outshined like these are options that can be replaced and are usually power crept on or outshined by other cards but can still be good choices for certain decks they might even fit into a little bit better c is like less optimal cards definitely potential for it to be power crept on and just can sometimes find some rare niche a d is just bad cards in general and then F is just like, like, why did, like, what the fuck are these cards? Like, why do they even do anything? Like, like, they, 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 they just need to change. Roughly. D and F are almost the same. We decided to make F as a bit of a meme, but now it's starting to make sense as we progress. So calling a strike is a solid option. Of that, I put this into A tier. Dude, the, like when we do the epic tier list, it's probably going to be F, D, S, and that's it. Nothing in between. Either bad or good. Calling Strike's a pretty good card. I like it. I think it's a great card. 
Oh. Almost moved Decimate to the S tier. Arena Battlecaster. It's not a bad card. I think Arena Battlecaster is a good C. A good, good, good C. Like, when you're playing an aggressive Noxus deck, yes. for whatever reason, Earlmeister, thanks for the follow, by the way. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 Arena Battlecaster, though. Probably a C, right? Probably a C. Basilisk Rider. Probably also a C. We have two copies here, so I'll put them both in. <laughs> Crowd favorite. Crowd favorite. Gee, that's a bad card, isn't it? But it, 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 it does function. I don't think it's a terrible card. Yeah, you can go into C. Decisive Maneuver. Gee, I don't even... I, I've never even played this card before. It's functional. Stun, give all units. Yeah, probably a, probably a C as well, right? Definitely on the lower end of C. It's not a completely garbage card. Almost is though. I almost compare it to the cards in D. It's C or D, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna put it in lower C for now. Observation post. You took decisive maneuver to master last season. But yeah, we'll, we'll put it into C then. C has some niche cards, so there you go. Like these are playable cards. Yeah, I'll put the decisive maneuver there. Maneuver is ceiling is pretty high too, yeah. If the meta, like, you know, as things change within the future, and I don't know what they might change into, but there could always be a time for buffing the entire board. Don't think it's a good home right now. Either do a lot of these cards though, right? Either do a lot of the cards in C. There is no real good home for them, but they, they can exist with some potential. More than these cards can, right? Noxie and Guillotine. I already saw this card and I thought about it. It's going in B. Almost an A, but it can be quite awkward when you only get to like, it's like, yeah, it requires a lot of setup, but the payoff can be pretty good. So for that, I think Noxian Guillotine goes somewhere in the B tier. I think it's a good card. I think it, there's potential there always. I climbed to Masters in four days from Plat with Overwhelm Maneuver. Well, that's pretty pog. You'll have to hook me up, man. You think Maneuver is a B? Maybe on your tier list. Maybe on your tier list. Not on mine. I can't put, I can't compare it to the cards in B. Doesn't, doesn't mean the C cards aren't working. Arachnoid Host. It's not a bad card. It's not oftentimes decided. Arachnoid host is just a big fat D. Crimson Disciple. Probably going to be another C tier card. It is a two mana, two, three. If it's damage, we'll deal one now. Trefarian Glory Seeker. Dude, I miss the old, like in this current meta, I miss the old Disciple. If I can go back to a meta where I could just play some brain dead aggro and get countered by healing, I'd be fine. The meta is in a real crazy place right now. Trefarian Glory Seeker. It's probably going to be a... There's no way Disciple is in D tier. I don't think it's completely unplayable. I wouldn't say it's completely unplayable. D tier is like almost unplayable, right? 
I would probably if I was if I was like thinking about making an aggressive deck right now, I could venture into disciple for sure. Throw in some transfusions plates. I could probably play traditional burn aggro with disciple still, and it might just find some wins. I don't think it's completely trash. I wouldn't give it the D tier. I wouldn't give it the B tier though. Very niche. Trafarian Glory Seeker. Two mana five one with a. Uh... It's not top of C. Okay. The the ordering is not really in order right now. I'll put it somewhere in the middle. C. Not a C plus. Not a C minus. I'm just gonna give it a C. I'm gonna give Trafarian Glory Seeker a B. Not every region can deal with this card effectively. Um, it is a solid option. I wouldn't put it into the A tier. But it's solid. It is a very solid card. It's a very unique card too. It's a very unique card. There's no other card quite like Trifarian Glory Seeker. Ugh. Crimson Awakener. I think Crimson Awakener is almost unplayable. Obviously, you could do some cute stuff with the damaging. I also think some of these cards are kind of unplayable. Looking at some of these cards in D tier. Now that I'm looking at some of the cards in C tier. I'm looking at Averrosian Outriders here and I'm starting to think that I need to bring Averrosian Outriders up. I don't think Averrosian Outriders is as bad as half of these cards here. Obviously there's no good home for it right now, but either do a lot of the cards in C. You're being promoted Averrosian. I believe you should be in the C tier. Trafurian Assessor. Obviously it's 5 mana now. Pretty crazy card before the nerf, after the nerf, eh. Probably a B. Card draw is pretty insane. Minotaur Reckoner. 6 mana, 6, 6. It's a pretty solid card. I actually like Reckoner and the B. Somewhere next to Fey Blade Twirler. I think Reckoner is generally a pretty good card. Obviously, like, we're not picking it up. It's almost unplayable. Maybe it maybe it goes into the C tier actually. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a bit too. It should be somewhere here, actually, because like a six mana six six at the round start, stunning an enemy. It's kind of cool. We have been seeing uh, what is it? The new card, the eight mana eight eight, stun two enemies. That's been pretty pog. For two more mana, you can play that. Yeah, I don't know. Recognize like. Okay, I guess I'll put it in C. I don't think I can put Reckoner into B. I don't think it's quite as useful. It could do some like yeah, it, it goes like right around next to Yone somewhere. Mind Splinter, yeah, Mind Splinter. It seems pretty crazy at the moment, and Reckoner is like Mind Splinter except for two mana less and two less stats and one less target for stunning. So yeah, it's a budget Mind Splinter. A vision. Vision. Vision's a pretty good card. You discard it, obviously, it's fucking insane tempo. I'm actually gonna put vision into the B tier. 
Like it can it can power archetypes itself. I wouldn't say it says like it requires some synergy. But it's like a solid card. Vision A? Almost. There's no way it's an A? Dude. <laughs> how cool is this? How cool is it seeing like how different our opinions can be on like the value of cards, right? And this is crazy too, because think about like when it comes to buffs and nerfs, how we all have such varying opinions. Like, can you imagine how much of an issue that would be for when it comes to balance changes and stuff? Like, it's seriously insane to think about. Like, I'm like, I'll, you, you guys can obviously see, like, you can see the, make, the choices I'm making. Like, or some of the choices you guys help me with. But some of them I feel really confident in saying that they are a certain uh, tier. And then like people would be like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, why would you put that there? I think that's really interesting. And that's where deck building and strategy becomes very relevant. And people being able to do their own strategy. That's cool. I think vision better than decimate and starlight for its archetype. That's just me. Hmm. Let me let me let me take a step back and just like reframe my thought for a second. Yeah, nah, it still feels like a B to me. This is like sown seeds on steroids, but sown seeds is like not the best card. It's your board state though. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a it's a fine B. I think it's somewhat playable. Like you, you choose to play it in certain decks, one specific deck. Um, you need to discard it though. Um, it's not as easy to set up as some of the other cards, but it, do it definitely does empower an archetype. Actually, these cards here don't really empower archetypes. So actually, in that case, you know what? Yeah, maybe maybe Vision is an A because like. When you're playing like a discard deck, right? This card is like pretty good. Assessor powers five. Power matters. What? Yeah, I think vision's great. Um, I almost could have put Assessor into the great slot too. Not right now though. Because honestly, I also felt like Assessor empowered its archetype as much as Visions did. Maybe not right now, though. Savage Reckoner. Holy shit. This card's almost unplayable. Fat F. Fat F. Guys, Savage Reckoner is a fat F. Death Lotus. I don't think Death Lotus is actually that bad. I think I might put Death Lotus into the sea. As of right now, at least. It's a poor man's board clear. It probably isn't considered that much. Maybe C's a bit too generous, but I'm gonna put it in C because I think it's somewhat playable. Lasko Redeem Hydrate. Thanks, dude. I was a bit thirsty. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I was being too generous. 
I haven't been hit by death lotus for a, a while. I did see some Swain decks taking it recently, but that was just a tech. You could also argue some of these cards in the D tier can be teched as well. So yeah, all right. D, D for Death Lotus. Intimidating Raw. Probably sits around about the same area as these cards. Probably a C. I mean, you could stun all enemies with four or less power. That can essentially buy you a turn sometimes in any sort of control deck. There's some sort of ceiling there. Obviously, it's best played with stun synergy. We get that. But yeah, that's a pretty powerful card. But not on the B level of like playability. Yeah, C. Assembly bot. Bit of a meme card. I don't think it's completely garbage. Infinite scaling goes into this D tier. Like obviously like you can like actually like play assembly bot and like play spells and that's cool but that's memeing so is dawn and dusk though you're memeing right hextech transmogulator transform a follower into another follower it's a poor man's vengeance. Yeah, I think this card's pretty bad. I think it's way too weird. And... But you know what? Yeah, actually. Right now it's an F. But the problem is... There might be a time in the future... <laughs> where transforming a follower into another follower ends up being an OTK. Uh, but then again, for, for Gen, it's most likely going to be an F for forever. Who knows? But there's that like one weird thought that is like the ability to transform your unit into another copy of a unit could do something. Right now it's an F. Yeah. At fast speed, you'll probably be right, but I'm still going to put in an F. I just want to mention that. It could do something crazy at some point, but not right now. Not in its current state. Plaza Guardian's probably going to be a D as well. Um, for similar reasons to Assembly Bot, you can kind of like, you know, do that kind of weird thing with it. But yeah, other than that, that's kind of trolling. Oh, dude, Henchman has got to be an F. Possibly a D. <laughs> it's it's definitely not that playable. I'm starting to look at some of the cards in a D tier and I'm wondering how unplayable some of them are. Is, is inside of Aegis, like is main decking that just like an F? You think D tier is fine? I'll leave it for now then. It makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Professor Von Yip, when you summon a one cost ally grant a plus two plus two right that's probably a d i don't think it's as playable as the cards in c i don't think it's a terrible card though yeah main decking inside of vegas doesn't make any sense though Unstable Voltition. Grant me plus four and quick attack if you've cast a six boss cost card this game. Yeah, it's probably a D. Somewhere in there. Probably a D on Unstable. I don't think it's a complete fucking gutter's trash of a card, but like, 
He definitely put it somewhere in the D. Thermo. Thermogenic beam. Thermo is an A? I don't know, man. I think Thermogenic Beam is a pretty insane card. There's no other card like it. I want to put Thermo into uh, S, my guys. Not gonna lie. I think Thermo is pretty crazy. You'll be making a PNZ control deck for like three years. And you'll you'll look to Thermo and be like, I still have to include this card in my deck. Um, the problem is like Ezreal decks are getting nerfed, so what the fuck who's gonna be playing like PNZ control decks? I don't know. But if they are, they're playing Thermo Beam. For that is is an S tier card. Thermo is an incredible card. Um, the fuck does this card do? Benefactor, create in hand an epic card from your region. Uh, it's got value. All right, it's a D. Four mana, three, three, generate value. Probably a D. Shady character. Holy shit. <laughs> Shady character is a terrible card. Holy shit, guys. Holy shit. Shady character is a terrible card. I am sorry. There's like... Okay, but to be fair though... Comparing it to Hextech Transmogulator, like who knows if in the future we might be able to do a combo with these cards. That's not a complete meme. Let's move on. Static Shock is a solid A card. I think Static Shock is an amazing card. Although I don't think it's S tier. But I will definitely comfortably put it into A tier as much as you would con consider the rest of these cards along this line for whatever they kind of do. Static Shot's crazy. Definitely isn't an S tier card, but it has to be below it. Sump, Sump Snap, what? How do you pronounce that? Who's that streamer? Yeah, what's up, man? I can't pronounce this. Sump Snipe. Sump, Snipe, Scavenger. Static Shock good outside of S? Hell yeah, dude. I think Static Shock will be a great card. What's Thermo Beam outside of S too, right? But I don't know. They're, they're, they're going to be very powerful PNZ tools for a long time. Uh, this Scavenger is probably going to be a D. Um, in whatever deck you want to be running Sump Works map in, you're probably not going to be just in PNZ, so... I don't think this is a very good card, but I don't think it's completely trash either. I don't think it's an F tier card. Get excited! Get excited is a pretty good card. Wow, get excited, it's actually a pretty good card. I think I'm going to put get excited into the A tier, guys. I hope you feel comfortable with that. I feel pretty comfortable with that. I can hope I hope we can all agree on this one card that it is quite powerful. Um, even if we're not playing the burn deck and it's not as relevant. In in that burn deck that you play, right? It, it, it's generally a pretty good card. Bottom of A. Two card jinx situation. Yeah, let's just put it in A. Similar reasons to decimate, right? Powerful burn. 
Intrepid Marina. What is this? Support? Give my supported ally elusive this round. It's kind of a bad card, isn't it? I don't I don't think Marina is an F tier card. Almost an F tier, perhaps. Now nah, it's gonna be a D. I don't know. She has the support tag. We are seeing support cards become something. Yeah, without support, an F. You know, well, what would the card even be without support? You know, two mana, one, three. <laughs> Look, okay. Perhaps she's never been played before ever. And perhaps eminent benefactor's never been played before ever. You know what? I'm going to quickly change this. But these cards do generate value. Marina doesn't generate value. You know, no, no, no I'm confident. No, all right. I'm going to put Marina into the a fucking dumpster tier, but I'm also going to keep benefactor up simply because of generating value. Has higher value than these fucking garbage cards. <laughs> All right, Kempunk pickpocket. Probably a C tier card. Almost a B tier card. <laughs> yeah, now Kemp Kempunk's somewhat optional. I don't think it's a D tier card. I think it's pretty solid. Um, I don't think it's as often picked up as a B tier card. So I'm gonna put it into C. Kempunk Shredder. Probably a C tier card, guys. Almost a D. Is Shredder like D or C? I don't know. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to put it in D. Counterfeit copies. Counterfeit copies. Is that just a bad card? Probably D. Almost an F. So far we've seen in Legends of Runeterra the ability to like draw your entire deck instantly is not very common. Like there's no cards that just draw your deck. I don't think it's an F. Like look at the rest of the cards in D. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think this card is that bad it's got meme tier stuff i don't know like it's a bit more competitive it's a bit more competitive competitively meme worthy than the rest of these meme trash cards copies is an f complete meme i mean at burst speed pick a card in hand shuffle four copies of it into your deck There's, there's, there's like some sort of like ceiling there. Like, I don't think it's F. It's complete. I don't know. All right. I don't know, man. Yeah, with the current draw in the game, this card makes no sense. I understand that. But I can't put it into F. But it's kind of similar to what I explained about the shady character in Hex deck. It is almost unplayable though.
No, I don't think I don't think I feel very comfortable with that. I don't know. I think counterfeit copies is a much better card than the rest of these cards. I even put it higher than some of these cards here. But like nobody plays half these cards either. But they're like functional. And Benefactor keeps stressing me out, man. All these cards in D and F are stressing me out. There needs to be like 500 D minuses, D plus, D, F, F minus. But for now, I'm going to leave like this. Uh, Funsmith, probably going to be another D as well. Like all of your spells and skills deal one extra damage. A uh, 5 minute 2 3 though. Fuck them, man. That's so expensive. Yeah, it's probably just a D though. a bit more functional than the rest of these cards so these are definitely these are definitely suboptimal cards but they function chump wump chump wump is pretty solid card four mana four three with the puff caps C. I think I'm gonna put it in C. It does function. Does Ezreal's nerf hurt Chumpwomp's rating? I feel like it has to. More than likely. More than likely in general. Uh, it's definitely gonna be a functional card though. The stat line on it is reasonable. Uh, it develops better tempo than anything else for what it kind of does. Generating two puff claps. Uh, puff caps for you to discard. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. I think it goes in C. I think there might be some decks in the near future that might utilize Chump Womp for whatever reason. Even without Teemo, it's still pretty good. Even without Puff Cap Synergy, that's pretty good. Without without Ezreal getting nerfed, it's probably a lot better, yeah. Scuttlegeist. Definitely not a terrible card. I almost feel like I could put Scuttle into C tier. But comparing it to the cards in C tier, I don't know. It's a lot less playable. So for that, I'm going to put it into D. Endure doesn't want other top end, no. You would never run that. Possession! Holy shit! This card is an F! This card is garbage! I can confidently say I've never seen a scenario or will ever see a scenario where stealing your opponent's follower for a turn is going to be at all useful. Unless we're stealing our opponent's Radiant Guardian so we can glimpse beyond it, but that requires some memey setups. Wraith Caller. If possession didn't have the restriction of playing it with a full board. Yeah, perhaps. Like if you could actually like have seven units on board with possession, that's kind of cute. But guys, the Wraith Caller is definitely going to be going up here somewhere. Most likely into s four. It's either B or it's either B or C for me. Oh, oh, we've seen a few A's here. I'll let you guys do that one for me. 
I'm gonna put it in A. The box. Probably C. Almost a D, but it's gonna be a C. The box is playable tech. Oh, but the Rekindler, guys. Oh, the Rekindler. That's a strong card. That is a strong card. I think Rekindler is an S tier card. Do you know why? Because it's a rare. Because it's a rare. And it does what it does. You can build your deck around it. It's very powerful. This is a very powerful card. Yep, that's a solid card. Shark Chariot. Boy, I think Shark Chariot is a uh, solid D. Oh, fuck. Oh, boy. Atrocity. I'm just going to say Atrocity is very powerful. It's a win condition. Fuck, man. Even when we saw the nerfs to Endure. Yeah, like, it's insane damage. The ceiling for this card is incredible. It's a rather insane card, actually. Very powerful. So many games come down to I hope they didn't draw their atrocity. Yeah, that's true. But like besides that, it's generally quite powerful. Fresh offerings. Yeah, that's an F. It is so hard to play this card. Literally. It's actually literally so hard to actually play this card. It almost doesn't function. Splinter Soul. Summon an exact copy of an ally. It's yeah, this is this is meme worthy. I don't think it's dumpster garbage, but I think you like have to put in work for it, similar to the rest of these D tier cards. So Splinter Soul isn't complete FTR, but it could do some pretty cool stuff. There is some sort of ceiling there. But mostly memeing. I am Harbinger? Attack, grant me plus one for each ephemeral ally you have. Harbinger is an F. It's a little harsh. Three mana, two, four. It's a three mana, two, f it's a three mana, two, four that has fearsome and you can buff it with attacking with ephemeral. Like I have to put this near, I have to put this near like Shark Chariot, right? It's like, yeah, like you wouldn't play, sh like if you think Shark Chariot's an okay card, then you probably have to think Iron Harbinger is an okay card. By okay, I mean not okay, but yeah, this is D. It's some sort of a weird D card. Prankster. I think Prankster is a solid C. I think Prankster is quite functional. I think you could actually like consider building a deck with her even still now. It can sometimes feel suboptimal. But I wouldn't put it into D. I think it's actually a consideration. Fading Memories.
Fading Memories is definitely also probably going to be a C tier card. I see. C plus. Almost a B. Actually, maybe it's a B. Only works on followers. You can use it on your opponent's followers too. Ah, oh, no. This is definitely a B. Actually, Fading Memories is a really good card. It's a very functional... Very, like... Flexible... Powerful burst speed spell at zero mana. Zero mana cards are actually pretty crazy. Yeah. I think it's a good B. I think comparing it to these cards makes a lot of sense. I think Fading Memories is a B for the decks I've wanted. Yeah, Fading Stock went up recently. Also true. Yeah, I think it's a great card. Broad Awakening. Yeah, probably a D. Six mana is a lot for that effect. Just a dino AoE. Yeah. Fortune Prodigy. What the fuck does that do? Broad is C. I'm leaving it at the top of uh, D for now. I, I, I was hovering C because I'm looking at the rest of the cards in C, right? And I'm like, yeah, it's probably... Like, almost just as playable as the rest of these cards. But it's getting power crept on very hard. Tortured Prodigy is probably a D as well. Almost a fucking F tier card. Like, in terms of its playability. So when an ally dies, refill your spell mana. That's almost a fucking F. That's almost an F. I don't know, this card seems really bad. Has this ever been relevant? And could it ever be relevant? Maybe. Five mana, four, four. It's probably a, probably a fucking F, man. This card seems so bad. There's a really weird infinite you can do now. Okay, D. D for infinite. What's its stats? It's a five mana, four, four. It's a five mana four four. Yeah, like it's yeah, probably not F. F's pretty savage. Soul Gorger. Soul Gorger is probably a C. It's quite a powerful card. Yeah, it makes sense in C. I don't think it could be a D card. Play this shit in War Mothers. That's pretty pog. Pretty solid. Frenzied Skidderer. Almost a B, probably a C. Nah, this is a... Frenzied Skidderer is a pretty powerful card. Three mana, three, two with the fearsome. No wonder why they nerfed it to a two HP. This used to be a three mana, three, three. Holy shit. Frenzied Skidder is a solid card. For that, you go into the B slot. It was stupid, wasn't it? Ancient Crocolith. For a period of time, found some usefulness. For that. It's almost as unplayable. It's almost on the same level as these cards. But it's not unrealistic to like build a deck around it. So that's pretty pog. I'm going to put it in C. 
Thrill Remimeter. Probably a C as well. You've got like that niche Undying deck that can use it. I don't think it's a completely bad card. Remeter is low D. Holy shit. Have you seen the cards in D? You think it's like those cards? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think Remeter, Remeter is fine in C. It's like functional. It can do some pretty cool stuff and... You do summon a unit that costs two more. It can provide tempo in like aggressive decks. Yeah, okay. If we're on ju if we're justifying things by the Undying deck, on guard is also down there. Yeah, you know what? I think I may have lost my way. But Remita R Remita, even though still does a lot more for the Undying deck than On Guard does. I think Remita is a lot more playable than On Guard is. No, I think Remita is fine in C. Like, I think it's a, a tremendous amount more playable than On Guard is. And over a long period of time, I can see Remita being somewhat okay. Even though, they're, even though they're not in the same region though, but that could be something to point at, but I don't know. I think it doesn't help that I've seen Remita be played maybe 10 times and one of them made them a solitary monk and lost them the game on the spot. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't think it's a bad card. Green Glade Duo. It's the final card, guys. I like Green Glade Duo in A. 2 mana 2-1 two, with Elusive with infinite scaling. <laughs> Alright, I'll put Benefactor into F. Nah. Nah. It's a 4 mana 3-3 three, three with fucking... It can, you can play it. It's pretty bad, but you can play it. Yeah, if I start if I start bringing cards down to F, I'm gonna have to start bringing down lots of cards to F, and I don't want to do that. This is fine. D cards are bad too, guys. This is fine. I'm happy with this. D cards are bad. F cards are just as bad. But like F cards are really bad. If I was forced to build a deck in P and Z, I would rather play Eminent Benefactor than I would rather play Shady Character or Henchman or Marina. Like this would at least allow me to try and win with Tempo and Board State. These cards won't help me very much. Green Glade Duo wraps up the list goes into a solid elusive card and could always be considered forever into the future of elusive decks. There's not much else to say about that one, guys. Let's go ahead and save this. It's a bad card that doesn't even make the cut as a 40th card. Yeah, either do, either do half of the cards in the DTR. Have you seen these cards? These are all terrible cards. I almost feel like Broad Awakening needs to get a buff to the C-tier, not gonna lie. I actually don't think Broad Awakening deserves to be on the same level as these D-tier cards. 